Good morning. Today is Wednesday, December 13th, 2023. I will be your moderator for today's class. You have been muted. Please continue to monitor your mute and videos buttons during class. Welcome to the Zoom class given by some students of the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. We are a Zoom class of international, honest hearted truth seekers of Yahshua the Messiah. This is a school and not a church, and neither are we affiliated with any religious organization. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational, religious, and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim, and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan, operating throughout eternity to this present day. This school was established as a result of a divine vision and divine revelation given unto our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Yes. This school was incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. Class, classes are held in Canada, United States, Jamaica, England, Zambia, and students studying in the Bahamas, Ghana, Malaysia, Australia, and certain other foreign countries. The host is Dr. Lenore Allen of Brooklyn, New York. In this school, we teach the true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word or Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. It has been improperly substituted with the title Lord. The true title of the word of son is Elohim. Elohim has been improperly substituted by God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifested in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. And it has been erroneously substituted by Jesus Christ. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. But we now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title. That means that Elohim is the title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name, but it is an erroneous name. A minor investigation on your part in any good dictionary or encyclopedia would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language have any characters or letters in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by this letter J. Neither was there a letter J in the English alphabet until some 1400 years after the Messiah's death. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible renderings of the true and original name of our Father and of his Son. Christ is a title, just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit, and in his pure spirit state, he is inscrutable and incomprehensible and indiscernible. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on this Moses chart, as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. 
He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because a cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We have drawn this cloud all around the edges of this chart <clears throat> to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh knowing that man could not perceive of him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and took on form right within himself as Elohim. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being, that is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This form may only be seen in divine visions, and understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifested himself in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Yahshua the Messiah, whom the world calls Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we all must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is what was the name of our savior during the time he walked the earth plain a further understanding of this name Yahshua and title Elohim may be obtained by reading the preface of the holy name bible also in this school we teach by the divine pattern of the universe it is called a divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses atop Mount Sinai and showed him the tabernacle pattern in a vision. Yahweh instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, holy place, and a court round about. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof to how everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure and function of this divine threefold tabernacle pattern, and that absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. In this class, we teach the mission of Yahshua the Messiah, which was to fulfill the Old Covenant and to write the New Covenant in our heart and mind by the preaching of the Gospel. The ten primary aims and objectives are as follows. First, to help you find and know Yahweh our Elohim as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah, without the distinction of race or nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. Third, to investigate the unexplained spirit law, or so-called law of nature, and the powers latent in man. Fourth, to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, and modern practical and occult science. Fifth, to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six, to learn, know, and understand <clears throat> the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons, operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth, to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith 
which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh, from the beginning ordained, there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua, the Messiah. And ten is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua, the Messiah, with the hope of immortal glorification in the new earth state. Our watchword is peace, and our slogan is speak the truth. We would like to begin this morning with a prayer by Dr. Lucy Altman, if she's available. Scripture by Dr. Leon Grayson, if he's available. And we will have a song given by Dr. Jacqueline McCain. May we have our prayer, please. Good morning, class. Let's all take a moment and come take a deep breath and know that it comes from our Father, Yahweh, that we breathe his name day in and day out, his name is our source of life. Father Yahweh, we ask you to continue to strengthen us in our knowledge and in our faith and in our trust of your son, Yahshua the Messiah, to get us through in these last tribulous days. We ask you to cause us to be diligent to study, to know, all things that you would have us to know and that we may present this to anyone who wishes to know because we know that you only, Yahshua the Messiah, are our only hope of salvation. We thank you for this great vision and revelation that has been passed down through these years, through this great teaching. And we thank you for allowing us to see these great, great mysteries that you've revealed to us, how you make yourself known day to day to us, your ever present. We have been so blessed. Uh, we thank you for your love. Thank you for sending your son, taking away our sins, that we may be one with you in the spirit for eternity. For all these many blessings, we say hallelujah. 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 <clears throat> hallelujah. Good morning, brethren. Yahshua tells John on the Isle of Patmos, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. I love singing, he lives, because we know that Yahshua is in this world today and he lives within us. I serve a risen Savior, he's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy, I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, he's always near. He lives he lives, Yahshua lives today. He walks in me and talks in me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within my heart. 
In all the world around me, I see his loving care. And though my heart grows weary, I never will despair. I know that he is leading through all the stormy blast. The day of his appearing will come at last. Rejoice, rejoice, O oh brethren, lift up your voice and sing eternal hallelujah to Yahshua the King. The hope of all who seek him, the help of all who find, none other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives. He lives, Yeshua lives today. He walks in us and talks in us along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He lives within our hearts. Hallelujah. Praise Joshua. Hallelujah. 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 I failed to mention that Malachi. It's going to be, I'm sorry, it's going to be Malachi 1 and 2 because 1 goes right into 2. Malachi 1 and 2. Thank you. Dr. Grayson. I'll read it because I love it. Okay. Dr. Malachi, Lenore Allen will read the scripture lesson. Malachi 1 and 2, the prophecy of the word of Yahweh to Israel by Malachi. I have loved you, saith Yahweh. Yet you say, wherein hast thou loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith Yahweh? Yet I loved Jacob and I hated Esau and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate, desolate places. Thus saith Yahweh of hosts, they shall build and I will throw down. They shall call them the border of wickedness and the people against whom Yahweh hath indignation forever. And your eyes shall see, and you shall say, Yahweh will be magnified from the border of Israel. A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is mine honor? And if I be a master, where is my reverence, saith Yahweh of hosts, unto you, O priests, that despise my name? And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? You offer polluted bread upon my altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that you say, the table of Yahweh is contemptible. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer now unto thy governor, will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith Yahweh of hosts? And now I pray you, beseech El that he will be gracious unto us. This has been by your means, will he regard your person, saith Yahweh of hosts? Oh, that there were one among you that would shut the doors, that, would, that no more vain fire might be kindled on mine altar. I have no pleasure in you, saith Yahweh of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. For from the rising of the sun, even until the going down of the same, my name should be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense should be offered unto my name. And a pure offering for my name should be great among the nations, saith Yahweh of hosts. But you have profaned it in that you say the table of Yahweh is polluted and the fruit thereof, even his food is contemptible. 
you said also, behold, what a weariness it is. And you have snuffed at me, saith Yahweh of hosts. And you brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick. And you brought an offering. Thus you brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith Yahweh? But cursed be the deceiver, which have in his flock a male and voweth and sacrifices unto Yahweh, a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith Yahweh of hosts, and my name should be reverenced among the nations. Okay, Malachi 2. And now, O oh you priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith Yahweh of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you, and I will curse your blessings. Yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and sprung and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you for my cov that my covenant might be with Levi, saith Yahweh of hosts. My covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear with, wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and t did turn many away from iniquity. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of Yahweh of hosts. But you are departed out of the way. You have caused many to stumble at the law. You have corrupted the covenant of Levi, saith Yahweh of hosts. Therefore have I also made you contemptible and base before all the people according as you have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. Have we not all one father? Hath not one El created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his mother, against his brother, by profaning, by profaning the covenant of our fathers? Judah, has dealt treacherously, treacherously and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem for Judah has profaned the has profaned the holiness of Yahweh which he loved and hath married the daughter of a strange el Yahweh will cut off the man that doeth this the master and the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offereth an offering unto Yahweh of hosts. And this have you done again, covering the altar of Yahweh with tears, with weeping and with crying out, because he no longer regarding your offerings or accepts them with the favor from your hand. Yet you say, wherefore? Because Yahweh hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast de dealt treacherously. Yet she is thy companion and the wife of thy covenant and did not make a, did not make of Twain a unity so that he might have the right spirit. And why a unity? So that he might produce a holy seed. Therefore, take heed to your spirit and let none of you deal unfaithfully against the wife of his youth. For Yahweh, the Elohim of Israel, saith that he hateth putting away, for one covereth violence with his garment, saith Yahweh of hosts.
Therefore, take heed to your spirit that you deal not treacherously. You have wearied Yahweh with your words, yet you see, yet you say, wherein have we, wherein have we wearied him? When you say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of Yahweh, and he delighteth in them. Or where is the Elohim of judgment? That was Malachi 1 and 2. Hallelujah. We'd like to thank everyone for their participation. I will be one of the readers this morning. I volunteer. Um, and anyone else that would like to volunteer and jump in, please do so. We'd like to thank everyone for their participation this morning. I will now turn this class over to our host, Dr. Lenora Allen. Dr. Allen? Good morning, everyone. I'm glad that we're able to gather together and learn more about the name of our husband and savior, Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua. And I'll turn this over to Dr. McCain because she knows what's going on. Thank you. Good morning, brethren. Praise Yahshua. We had such a great time yesterday going over the name pamphlet, and it has been requested from some of the brethren that we open the floor for the first 30 minutes. If anybody want to add to with the name or anything, I do have one thing I would like to add. When uh, she did the, uh, the, uh, the little picture, I thought that was so beautiful when she did Jacob's Ladder and she was showing the H's. And so we know over in Genesis 17 and 15, where, Yah where Abram's name was Abram and Sarah name was Sarah, we want to get that Genesis 17 and five, I mean, if we want to get that. And then uh, in volume one, page 113, you have the, uh, the Hebrew letters. And if you look at that, you see the H equals breath or aspiration. So what he did is he put his spirit in Abraham and changed Abraham's name from Abram to Abraham. That's Genesis 17 and five, right? And that's where he changed Sarah's wife name to Sarah. So he put that he, H in there by that Gen breath. Genesis uh, 17 and five says, neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. Mm -hmm. For a father of a multitude of nations have I made thee. Mm -hmm. So he was the father of many nations. And then he was showing there in the 15th verse where he put uh, uh, Sarah. So he put his spirit in both of them. And if you look at, on, like I said, on page 113, the Hebrew alphabet, the H, uh, and in the Hebrew I mean, means breath. So that's Yahweh putting his spirit in. I just thought that was sharp. You know, I saw that long time ago. I just wanted to share that. And uh, Dr. Altman, I think she has something she wanted to add. Yes. Uh, good morning. Now, my only uh, comment on, uh, on uh, yesterday's discourse is simply that uh, we often get accused of just uh, harping too much on the name and the name of our creator and our savior is just vitally important. And it's not something that we say, it's what he says. That was the first commandment dealt with his name, uh, to reverence his name not to take his name in vain, not to make it empty or worthless. He says to extol his name, declare his name, publish my name. Uh, there's nowhere where he ever said to hide it or conceal it or deny it. He says over and over throughout the prophets, my people will know my name. Oh, it just uh, was on my mind that it's just vitally important that we know his name. And just as we know the importance of our own name, because your entire identity is associated with your name. Well, his name. 
Yahweh, the causer of existence, Yahshua, he that causes to exist is salvation. You know, these very important. There is no other name given among men by which we must be saved. So I, I just wanted to emphasize how important he tells us it is, and we have to be obedient to that. But that, that was all I wanted to add. Thank you very much. Want to go over Malachi 1 and 6? Malachi 1 and 6 says, A son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where is my honor? And if I be a master, where is my reverence? Saith Yahweh of hosts unto you, O priest that despise my name. And ye say, wherein have we despised thy name? Ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar. And ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of Yahweh is contemptible. And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee? Or accept thy person, saith Yahweh of hosts. Now, you know, we, we know how important a name is if you go to your boss and ask him for a raise and call him by the wrong name, I don't think he's going to receive you too well. Right. You know, if you have to make a payment, if you make the check out and misspell the name of the person you have to pay, they're not going to be too pleased with that. You know, these are just day-to-day -day stuff. And... You know, our creator is so great that he shows us, he reveals himself to us in just these day-to-day -day things. We can see his death, burial, resurrection every single morning when we wake up from sleep. You know, his presence, he is everywhere. For in him we live. We move and we have our being. And this wonderful teaching has caused us to be aware of this. And it's a wonderful thing. Because we talk about the 10th aim to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom. Now we're in the kingdom now psychologically in our consciousness. We see these things happening day to day, death, burial, resurrection, over and over. We know, we breathe that name. All life is contained within Yahweh, Yahshua. It's just such a wonderful, wonderful blessing. Um, You know, I, I don't even have the words to describe how great this thing is. I'm going to turn this back over to the moderator. Thank you for giving me the time. I like to, this is Edna again. First of all, I would like to extend my love and appreciation because we've always been told that we all have a testimony. And some may be afraid and sit in their seat in class and uh, get up and speak. But when, even before you hit the podium, ask within yourself, Yahshua, get Adna out the way. And you do the speaking. And I remember yesterday when I said, let's take that deep breath of life because that's what we're doing. Or we would cease to exist. We wouldn't be sitting in these classes that, Lenore, Jackie, and Dennis now that comes in and um, allow us to be here. Truly a Joshua Eno. And um, the name is very important. And I tried to express that the, to the best of my ability. Um, and like I said, we all have a testimony. But um, 
we didn't get a chance to really get into it's so much. It was a pamphlet and it's called Your Physical Body is a Witness to the Name of Yahweh. Yahweh is showing us it's not what you know. It's, a, it's, it's not how much you know, but it's what you know for sure. I won't be able to say it all. This one won't be able to say it or that one or the other. But we all have a testimony. And you can't just, if I'm a, a, a grocery store and people say, it's just something about you. You came in, you're smiling, you speak, you know, you stop and say, if only you knew. And then you go on to explain that there, that our creator have a name. It's not Lord, God, Jesus Christ. Those are names, Jesus, and titles, Lord and God. Those are just titles. It's so important that you know the name of your creator. Sometimes you get their attention and sometimes you don't. You can't shove it down their throat, you know, or we just can't, um, you know, be so hard. You don't know what a person is going through. And then they'll turn around and say, I knew it was just something about you. What is that name again? They want it. They do want to know, but do they really, really want to know? So you give them the information, you give them a, a phone number, an address, and invite them down to class. Because can't nobody tell anything about Yahweh but Yahweh himself. And he has to, be, he's in everybody. He's in everybody. And he has to do the uh, talking. So with the participation, um, I was saying yesterday, I said, Deborah, there's probably, you know, they had that, but other people that have something to say about the name or that one aim, which is read, the ninth aim, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning, this was a setup, is from the beginning ordained. There is no other name, no other name given among men whereby men can be saved saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And that's why we had Acts 1, 12 read. Uh, we had a list of um, things that we want to read as far as the name. It was just so much. And uh, I was just talking to Deb. She was on her way uh, after her doctor's appointment. And uh, she said she was going to come in and get right on because I know that there was a few more things, but I know we don't want to extend all the whole two hours again. Uh, but I just wanted to say, uh, there's so much more to say. And I know Dennis has something to say. Lenore had Malachi poured up. You know, Jackie's, uh, of course, singing and preaching in this gospel. They're still preaching about Yahweh, Yahshua. Or, you know, you're getting that message across. It kind of settled us down. And we appreciate that. And if Deborah's on here, maybe she can say something to add on. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Jean Burris, you had your hand up. Did you still need a question asked, answered? Uh, I didn't want to ask a question. I had a comment. Yes, uh, ma'am. I am not these days getting out in the public a lot. Most of my outings are to the physician's office or therapy or something like that. But during the telephone calls that I receive from the strangers, from the pharmacy, from the, the doctor's office, whatever, right now everybody's wishing you a um, Merry Christmas. And I find that this has given me Dr. Jane, I think you're muted. Her mic went out. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see something. She's still talking, but we can't hear. If you can hear us, Dr. Burris, we can't hear you.
No, she's gone. Oh, yes, yeah, she is gone. I think Deb said she had uh, to, something True. to add on. She okay, Deb, thank you. Maybe she might come back in. Okay. Is there anyone else want to add anything to the name or have any comments? I just have a comment. That name is very, very, very important that you can't even put it into words. That was the first thing that got me when I first came into this class was the name. And it didn't take any time for Yahweh to reveal that to me mm -hmm. at all. I did kick or scream. Is she back? Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. I just want to apologize. My That's equipment okay. keeps go ahead. My equipment keeps going out on me. So I don't know what the last thing you guys said. But even mm -hmm. over the telephone is what I said. It's right. a good time to mention that. I mentioned I don't celebrate Christmas, that my creator is Yahweh. And oftentimes people say, I never heard that. I'll spell it for them and have them to look it up. So it's never an inconvenient time to allow others to be gifted with the name of our creator. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Praise Shashua. Mm -hmm. Yes, hallelujah, Dr. Burroughs. Yes, hallelujah. And I'll just continuation just a little bit. Uh, the name was never hard for me. Well, I take that back. It was hard for me because I was steep and trained in Lord and God, not realizing that it was a name. It wasn't a name. And then I come to this school and I get reminded that you don't put the in front of a proper name. I learned that in elementary school. Um, the Lord, the God, but what is the name? Nobody calls me the Teresa even though the first three letters is the, but you know, no. Um, but that was the once Yahweh, and I prayed and I asked Yahweh, if that's not your name, please show me. And he did that night when I said that this is your, if Jesus is not your name, then show me, teach me what is your name. And from night, that night on up until now, there's nothing that anybody can say that, convince, that can convince me that our father sent his son in the name of Yahshua, which means Yahweh is our salvation. That is the most beautiful song to my ears that I've ever heard in my whole life. And that name gives me peace. It gives me joy. It gives me happiness to want to spread it and tell everybody I know about it. And nobody wants to hear that because they were like I was. Didn't want to let Jesus go. And I understand those people. I do. But please, please, anybody that's listening under the sound of my voice, Check it out for yourself. Don't believe it because I said it. Check it out. It's easy to be checked. Yahshua. Yahweh is salvation. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved or must be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. Let's have it. That's what I got on that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, hi, this is Lenore. I have three things that I wanted to share, which I know we've heard before, but we repeat. This scripture, when I read it, when it was read in the class, I had heard the name Yahweh, but this floored me. Um, 
I like Malachi, the first chapter, he says, I'm a father, how come I don't get any respect, right? And we knew when I grew up, fathers demanded respect. Mm -hmm. And he's saying, can you treat your your governor? Can you treat your supervisor this way? How come you think you could treat me this way? And then he says, you offer up polluted sacrifices. And then when you see that the sacrifices are pointing to Yahshua the Messiah, which is the savior of your soul, you do not want a polluted sacrifice. It's very important that the sacrifice be sound. And it, and if he is as a lamb, that lamb was without spot and blemish. And if he is here to cleanse our souls from sin, we you cannot clean up something with a dirty rag. You don't take the rag that you use to get the oil out of your engine to clean off your living room table so that you can sit down your dining room table so that you can sit and eat. It has to be a clean sacrifice. And so he's talking here. And now, oh, you priest. Now, here's the significance of the priest. The high priest had to beg for forgiveness for the children of Israel every year. He had a, uh, a placard on his forehead that said holiness unto Yahweh, and it would make an impression so that if he was to take it off, you would see that it said on the outside, holiness unto Yahweh. Now, under this new covenant, that is so that name is supposed to be in you. The law was outside of the Jews. Now it's supposed to be in the body of Yahshua. And he says, and now, oh, you priests, the priests did not have to do the works that the other tribes had to do. All the other tribes were supposed to give a tenth. And by each one giving a tenth, they received a whole. And their job was to be obedient to Yahweh, to teach the people, to gather the people when the people were ill, when they had leprosy, they were supposed to go to the priest and he would do the supposed thing that would make them clean, that could cause them to be cleansed. When a man was jealous of his wife and thought that she was being treacherous, you would take the woman to the priest and he would have a certain way to tell whether or not she was being treacherous and if she was not being treacherous, they would be granted with new life. They would come together and they would have offspring. So the priests had a close relationship with Yahweh. It took them out of the fields, took them away from the animals. They were supposed to be dedicated for, to him. And, he, and he's saying, and so he gave them a favored um, position. When you look up the word Levi, it means joined they were joined to him now the way that they even came that they were named levi was that the daughter who was not wanted of the husband was in fact hated by her husband jacob she he wanted the beautiful one but the beautiful one wasn't having offspring at that time he wanted the beautiful woman he didn't want Leah. So what happens when he lays with Leah, she starts being prodigious. She starts having offspring. The first one is called Reuben and it says, see a son. And you can see that it's pointing to Yahshua the Messiah. Behold, virgin shall conceive. I'm not saying that she was a virgin. He had intercourse with her and shall conceive and shall conceive. Then the next one is called, um, I'm not sure, no. I'm not sure who the next one is, but Levi means joined. Now that I'm having sons, my husband will be joined to me. When they were in the wilderness and Moses comes down from the mount and they say, okay, who's on Yahweh's side? It is Levi, the priesthood tribe that runs to Yahweh. And they are the one that take the, that take the people out who is like Yahweh puts a draws a line in the sand and Levi joins and 3,000 will be 
killed that day. So it's like the priest were close to him. He says, oh, and now, oh, you priest, this commandment is for you. If you will not hear. Well, they could hear better than anybody else because they were preaching and teaching the law to the other ones. And if nothing else, you know, people say, I don't like to get on the floor. But the good thing about having floor time, preparing for the floor, sharing something that has excited you and that you want to tell to someone else, when you are speaking, if nobody else is, if nobody else is listening, you are. So it gives you a time to, ex a chance to express what you have learned. It's a good thing to go over these things. And incidentally, these classes are not for us to sit around and become great speakers. It's for us to gather the information so that we can go out and we can preach and teach to someone else. If you will not hear, and if you will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith Yahweh of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. I will curse your blessing. Yea, I have cursed them already because you do not lay it to heart. I will corrupt your seed. By the time Yahshua comes in, you can see that the priests and those, um, when you just do a little research in a Bible dictionary, you'll find that they were not following the, the line that Yahweh had set up with Aaron and that the priesthood was sort of like, a, it, it, was, it was sort of like, I'm not it wasn't for sale, but it, it could be, it could be rewarded, it could be given the high priesthood was not supposed to, was not necessarily the one who was most dedicated to Yahweh you can see the way they were all ready to take out Yahshua they were not concerned with Yahweh's salvation in fact even you'll read in the book and it's I mean when you just read the book not trying to oh, I'm doing a deep train of thought when you just read it it's amazing Yahshua raised a man from the dead Lazarus which you would have said whoa and then you see at the end of that chapter, they're saying, you know, we should kill Yahshua and we should kill Lazarus too. And he's thinking, what are you thinking? If a man can go into the earth, can just speak, and a man that's bound come out after four days, and I understand that that is pointing how mankind was bound for four days, could, could not speak, could not walk, could not go in the ways of Yahweh after four days and he says loose him and he's alive and he's loosened he's ready to live his life if a man can do that just speak and life come forth what ray gun do you think you have that you can put him in the ground and he's going to stay there <laughs> what are you thinking if a man has been raised to the dead all you can do is that's all you got the power of death but I will corrupt your seed and will spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feasts, and one shall take you away with it. And you shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Yahweh, say it's with, Yah with Levi, say it's Yahweh of hosts. What's the significance? All of these names are pointing to your relationship with Yahshua. We need to be joined with him. We need to see that he is a son that Yahweh has given us. Um, uh, one one of the name Judah means praise. We need to praise him. All of those names are significant. Uh, my covenant was with him of life and peace, and I gave them to him for the fear wherewith he feared me and was afraid before my name. The law of truth was in his mouth, and iniquity was not found in his lips. He walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. That's Aunt Yahshua operating in you. You don't want to see negativity. You want to see someone turn. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge, and they should seek the law at his mouth, for he is the messenger of the Yahweh of hosts. That's your job. You are a messenger of Yahweh of hosts. You say, I'm not a speaker. Well, you can say these things. Come to class. Learn about this. Read this that can be your job okay and then the next scripture that i wanted to share was um jeremiah 23 and 27 and we used to we used to say this quite often 
Okay, could somebody? Oh, could we pick it up at? Uh, uh, could we pick it up from twenty four? Jeremiah twenty three and twenty four. Jeremiah twenty three twenty four. Can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him? No. Saith Yahweh. Do not I fill heaven and earth? Saith Yahweh. I have heard what the prophet said that prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. And every time we read this, I remember there was a, a teacher that used to come to our class a lot. His name was Michael Rosti. And he would say, which thing to cause my people to forget my name. It's premeditated. It's it, they they plan this. It's not a mistake. It's like, oh, how come I'm saying Lord? And this this is done on purpose. They don't want you to know Yahweh, which thing to cause. My mother used to complain that in New York, they would change school districts so that the, the really good schools, black kids couldn't go to that because you were zoned out. And she would complain that people were distinctly trying to make it so that you couldn't go to these good schools. Well, things happened and people did end up going to school, even the bad schools. If you're dedicated, you want to learn something, you can which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams. So they'll give you, we're supposed to be following a cloud. A dream comes out of a cloud. He wants to get in, in, in front of the cloud and give you a false impression, which they tell every man to his neighbor. They're not afraid to tell you uh, that the name of your father is Kinley. No. And the, and the name of your mother is Harris. No as their fathers have forgotten my name for forgotten my name for Baal and what does Baal mean the Lord so this this was premeditated this was done on purpose can we read 28 verse 28 the prophet that hath a, de a dream let him tell a dream and he that hath my word let him speak my word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat saith Yahweh and some in in some groups of people you will not be popular if you do not say the group think if you not go if you do not go along with the group but he says if you're going to say something tell my word let speak my word faithfully what is the chaff to the wheat you, you throw the the, the the weed up in the air and the shaft is taken away with the wind. All of the things that are saying will not stick. And incidentally, when you listen to the doctrine that comes out of LA, it is anybody who was a Christian, it wouldn't even be enticing to them. Dr. Kenley, that's your that's the name of your heavenly father? No. It, the, this stuff was specially designed poison. For people in this institute could you read 29 is not my word like as a fire saith yahweh and like a hammer that breaketh a rock in pieces therefore behold i am against the prophet saith yahweh that steal my words every one from his neighbor behold i am against the prophet saith yahweh that use their tongues and say he saith Behold, I am against them that prophesy false dreams, saith Yahweh, and do tell them, and cause my people to err by their lies and by their recklessness. Yet I sent them not, nor commanded them. Therefore, they shall not profit this people at all, saith Yahweh. And that's what we're told in the school. Check it out. Know for yourself. Don't yeah. pe put people's personages above the truth know for yourself if it doesn't make sense leave it alone um and the last one i wanted to share was um hosea two and lenore i think your uh, sound just cut out 
Okay, the last one, I'm sorry, the last one I wanted to share is Hosea 2 and 16. Hosea 2, 16. And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shalt call me no more Balaam. And read 17. For I will take away the names of Balaam out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. And if you, um, if you could look at the story of Leah and Rachel, and she had, she was, um, Leah was given to um, the husband, and he hated her, he didn't want her, he had intercourse with her, he had um, offspring with her, but he did not desire her. So she was not like, he, he, he hated her. So she did not have a husband. She did not have a loving husband who looked at her with tenderness and kindness and love. And it says here, and it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Ishai, and shall call me no more Baalai. Well, if you're reading this and you have that discerning mind that you would have if you were reading something for a college course, you say, why are we reading this whole thing? It's been transcri transcribed into English. And then we got to this point where what's an Ishai? What's a Baalai? You know, what's a Baalai? Then when you look in, in, the, in the notes, it will tell you, thou shalt call me my husband and thou shalt call me no more my lord so one had a husband that loved her and cared for her and the other one just had a lord and under the old covenant you had to work for your salvation under the new covenant it's a love covenant but what you're seeing here that the world is calling him my lord and we have an understanding that he is your husband. And that's the day that, that we have now. And that's the day that the world has yet to discover. It shall be at that day, saith Yahweh. Now people are all into Christmas and they have, you know, Yahshua as a little baby, meek and mild and loving and all this kind of stuff, have no understanding why he comes when he comes why i was just reading the other day it says he comes and they put him in swaddling clothes and you say and when i you read the bible you say why do we need to know that swaddling clothes you know they put him in a jumper whatever swaddling means he was he was wrapped up he has a cause and so he's bound he cannot, you know, he cannot decide, well, you know, I don't want to do the salvation thing. I think I'll marry somebody and have a couple of kids and live happily ever after. No, he is bound to walk in the ways that it has been foretold he's going to walk. He's, he's, he's got to get on the cross. There's got to be four points of blood. And so his life story is told. It shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that shall call me Ishai and shall call me no more Baalite. Why does this give us joy? Because you don't have somebody just laying down laws on you you can't understand. Now, the Yahweh's operation is beginning in you. It makes sense to you, and you can call him my husband, which is supposed to be a loving relationship. And Yahshua says, it talks about in the book, husbands, love your wives. And people say, oh, that's spiritual. No, it's physical. You gave, you met somebody, you gave them your name, have some patience with them, have some long suffering with them, have some kindness to them. And maybe that will cause them to, to walk in the ways that you would like them to walk. Love your, love your spouse. Yahshua loved his spouse so much he died for her. And how do we know that? Because in the beginning of this, and people used to say it's a love story and I just love myself some love stories. Adam willingly died for his bride. He didn't say, oh, that's the red pill. Let me get rid of her and get me something real. No, he willingly died for his bride and she stayed with him and they did what they were supposed to do. So anyway, that, that name of Yahshua, it means something. It means Yahweh is salvation. He who causes to exist. He's the one that set Adam and Eve up in that situation in the first place. And then it comes to pass that he dying willingly for his bride is showing that Yahshua and Dr. Kinley said we ought to bend over backwards for each other. Yahshua willingly died for his bride. I don't have anything else to say. Anybody else have anything to say?
That was really good, Lenore. Thanks for sharing that. That was really beautiful, Dr. Allen. Praise hey, Joshua. Who does that sound like? <laughs> good morning, yes, brethren. Praise Joshua. Yes. Deborah, um, were you going to continue the little bit that you had? No, okay. somebody else, somebody else, Dr. Van Hook, you had something to say? Yeah, good morning, brethren. I've just enjoyed everything I've heard this morning, and I am just so grateful for the fact that we've been in this teaching long enough to, one, understand what the founder meant when he said, do not believe me. But make me prove to you that I had a vision unto your satisfaction. And I'm one that can say, yes, it has been proven to me. Mm -hmm. But I continue to research because every day that I live, I see a new thing in the entirety of the creation. And this issue that we have going throughout the school now about lies and what have you, once again, you hear me say oftentimes about the founder's last lecture in the flesh. And he said that at my departure, there are going to be many that will rise up right among you, preaching damnable heresies, seeking to draw people to themselves. And if it does not happen exactly exactly like I told you, then I want you to get up, get out of here, and take anyone with you that will go. Now, the beautiful thing about that and this uh, information that's been circulating throughout the Institute is one of the people who said that the founder lied is one of those who is deceived and being deceived. Why? Because first of all, our slogan is speak the truth. And our watchword is peace. And so one, you're going to first of all have to hear that level of information from one of renown. And as you go through your Bible, it has never, ever been Joe Blow that you heard. When anyone ever listened to anyone, it was always men of renown. You see it in Jude. You see it back there with Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. These were all men of renown, people that people listened to, those that were charged with teaching the people. And so when it when when the, the lie went forth, then all you could say was the founder told the truth because we are witnessing this today. The fact is, and and the blessing is, is that we are not shaken by this. Why? Because he has put it in us to know the truth. And so that he, as well as he put it in us to know the truth and not to be shook, shaken, then he put it in them, the others, to deceive. And that was from the beginning. And he said, at the name of Yahweh, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess unto the glory of Yahweh. Why? Because the entirety of his creation and man was his highest creation. He put his signature on the man. Not only on the outside, but he also put it on the inside. And even the organs in your body speak to the glory of Yahweh. And that's my testimony that I am so grateful that he has privileged me enough to show me that and to show me, Aya Asha Aya, I will be what I will to be. So when we look at that chart, realize that we have been fortunate enough to see both sides 
of the coin. And Yahweh is not the author of confusion. Hallelujah. 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 Mm, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anyone else? Okay, Deborah, you just said, Deborah Hannah just said that she has something to say. Uh, every time she tried to get in, I don't know if she's gotten kicked out, but I told her I cannot hear her. Uh, Deb, can you speak up? Are you on mute? What? Yes, I was. My computer was really okay. <laughs> can you hear me now? Yes. yes. Thank you. Ooh, I do really appreciate all of the comments, testimonies that have been set forth. There's so much to the name, and it's the only name that we can be saved in. There were a few other things um, that I wanted to point out. There were some scriptures, and I know it was mentioned about um, Emma, I think her name is Emma Zarnicki. In volume one, uh, page 105, she stated that the name of, well, she has down Lord God, but we truly know. She says that the title Lord in the King James Bible is mentioned 6,779 times in, uh, in the Old Testament. Where it says Lord, it is, and she has Y H B H, but we truly know that is Yahweh, and that is the real name of our Heavenly Father. Mm -hmm. The first scripture that's mentioned there is Exodus, the 20th chapter, the seventh verse. Can someone read that for us, please? Exodus, Exodus 20, 20, and what verse are you asking? The seventh verse? Yes. Thou shalt not take away the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, to bring it to naught for. Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh away his name to bring it to, to naught. naught. But King James Virgin said, well, Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Right. So read it from the beginning on in the King James Version. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his, his name in vain. Okay, and by inserting the true names, thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh thy Elohim in vain, meaning bringing it as if it's worthless. There's power in the name. And I'll get some scriptures to back that up. But there's power in the name of Yahweh. There's power in the name of Yahshua. Can someone get... Whew. Let's start with the power that David had with Goliath. That's uh, 1 Samuel 1743, uh, maybe 45. 1 Samuel 17 and 45, then said David to the Philistine, thou cometh mm -hmm. to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of Yahweh of hosts, the Elohim of the armies of Israel, who thou hast defiled. Defied. Defied. Mm -hmm. Defied. Mm -hmm. and, and many of us know this, the event that occurred with David and Goliath. By the, but he said, I come in the name of Yahweh of hosts. Right. 
he came to him in the name and with one little stone, even though he had five stones in his pouch, one little stone, that stone was truly. And it talks about it in the scriptures, the, the stone being of Yahweh. Um, another scripture uh, talking about the power. Uh, let's get one over in. Okay, we have the law, the prophets, uh, and the fulfillment. Well, this is in the when, when uh, Yahshua was walking around in the flesh. Uh, first John, the first chapter, start about the ninth verse and go to 12, 9 through 12. Did you say John 1? Yes. John 1 and 9. The true light that, I'm sorry, the true light was that which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own tribe, and his own people received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the children of Yahweh, that is, to them that believe on the name of him. So we see that it's so vitally important that we believe and know that that is the true name of our Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua, which is Yahweh, Yah, the Yah portion of the name, that's the contraction of Yahweh, is salvation. Right. And that was it. I mean, it's much more, but that that's the other comments, some of the other comments that I wanted to make. Thank you. Thank you. I mean, hallelujah, praise Yahshua. Praise Yahshua. Hallelujah uh, that forever. Great is Yahshua. Okay. <clears throat> If there's no more, we can uh, start back reading the transcript unless someone else has something else to say. Well, we want to thank you for opening up the floor for that uh, that uh, aim, the ninth aim. Because I knew that there was, yes, praise Joshua. Did somebody have something to say? Yes, I did want to say since um Jackie, since you mentioned the ninth aim, and uh, yesterday we really enjoyed what was presented to us by the brethren, and um, uh, something, uh, Doctor Cardoza, he was um going through that principle of nine, but before I mention that, I just want to add uh, say that the name of Yahweh, Elohim Yahshua, is inexhaustible. I mean, there are so many scriptures. We, we will not be able to really contain all that is in there. That's why we're going to be learning in ages to come. Mm -hmm. But I, uh, Deborah was speaking uh, about the power that is in that name. And truly, we on this call can testify to the power that is in Yahweh's name. And she went to the scripture uh, when she was talking about David and Goliath. Yeah. Um, and as she was speaking... My mind went to uh, uh, Exodus, the third chapter in the law there, where it says that Moses, when Moses was given that name, he was given signs and wonders. Mm -hmm. and, and as uh, Dr. Kinley says, there is a simplicity in this teaching, he said that 
this is how he said it. He said the teaching is basic. It is simple. And it's, in other words, it's profound. Mm -hmm. So um, when we go back to Exodus third chapter, and we see where Yahweh is giving Moses in a vision his name. Mm -hmm. We see that he told Moses to cast that rod down. Cast it down. Mm -hmm. And what happened? That rod became a serpent. Yes. Mm -hmm. And John and on the Isle of Patmos there told us in Revelation who really was that serpent. That old serpent, he said. Mm -hmm. That is the devil. But going back to Moses, he said, um, cast that rod, cast your rod down. And the rod became a serpent in Moses' hand. And Moses you know, he, he bleed. I mean, come on now. So you uh, you have a rod in your hand and then you cast it down to become a serpent. Now that's showing some power yeah. in the name of Yahweh because Yahweh is speaking to him. Yes. Really. Um, mm -hmm. Really. <laughs> to keep the unity of the spirit, you have Yahweh, Elohim, Yahshua. And Elohim means almighty mm -hmm. or to be. Um, but anyway, he told them, he said, pick it up by the tail. And we know, we yeah. often um, um, uh, talk about that. We really see now that that tail really is the lie. So he mm -hmm. picks that serpent up by the tail, being obedient to Yahweh. And it be and it be, and it turned into or it became the rod again. Now, if that isn't power, I don't know what is. Now he, he gave him a second sign. He said, cast your hand, put not cast, but put put your hand in your bosom. Right. Now Moses, good hand. All right, nothing was wrong with his hand. Mm -hmm. He put it in his bosom, being obedient, and that hand was leprous, became leprous. Right. Leprous is a contagious, leprosy is a contagious disease. It's a deadly disease. When Moses, being obedient, did that, and then he told Moses to take his hand out again. And his hand, that hand, that leprous hand, became as his other flesh. Now, what we're seeing there, talking about the power, Yahweh, we see in the gospel in type is that leprous hand. We see that that the death, when he put his hand in his bosom. Burial. It was buried, that's a burial, and then he plucks it out again. That's a resurrection in type and shadow, pointing to Yahshua Messiah when he would come in a specially prepared body to go through that death, that burial, that resurrection. That's some power. And so I'm going to cut it short. So when this gospel is preached unto us, there's in the name, there is power. There is power. Because we're mm -hmm. talking about the Holy Spirit after the day of Pentecost. And that's Holy Spirit was poured out. You see, and now coming down to us, cutting it up short, you see, when the true gospel of the kingdom is being preached in the name of Yahshua Messiah, we see that that power is being demonstrated and some soul will believe and come to know 
Yahshua, who is our only Savior, our true high priest. Hallelujah. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise Yahshua. It's 1225. It's up to you, Lenore, what you want to do, darling. <clears throat> Well, I have the script. I have the transcript up. Anybody have anything to one last thing, testimony, the name, whatever? Well, I'm just going to say this and I'll keep it short. It's about the name. I was uh, going into the subway. People have heard this story before, but I, it was just amazing to me. Going in the subway, I don't like to take the stairs, so I took the elevator. When I'm going into that elevator, I'm like praying that the door hurry up and closes so no knuckleheads get on with you. So as the door is closing, of course, Mr. Knuckle has to come into the elevator and he's talking about, you know, my legs and all this kind of stuff. And I'm old. My legs never caused, you know, any great desire in anybody I ever knew. So he was just being annoying. So anyway, um, and, and I wasn't wearing, you know, I was wearing like, you know, uh, what do you call it, Bermuda shorts. It was, I wasn't, I'm too old for no booty shorts and nobody wants to see all that anyway. So anyway, the elevator is going down and he's talking, talking, talking. Then as we're going out, it's a very small elevator. He's standing in the doorway. So, you know, as you go by him, he's going to touch you or something. He's just being annoying. So, and I'm saying, oh, what do I do? What do I, maybe I should call on Yahshua. So I just said out loud, Yahshua. And that guy took off. It's like I had shot him. <laughs> he disappeared. And then I went, I paid for my ticket and I looked around and I said, yeah, where is that guy now? And I saw him sitting on a bench and he was shaking like a leaf. He looked like that part in the book that says, have you come to take us before time? And it was just a demonstration to him, to me that you are never alone and that he is with you. Okay, that's all I have to say. Hallelujah, that's right. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Power in the name. So this is one spirit in a body. Who's reading? Okay, October the 6th, 1974. One spirit in a body. Now, after he died and resurrected from the dead and sent them out, he sent them out the last time told her to go back to Jerusalem and tarry there until they receive power from on high. And then ye shall be witnesses unto me in Judea and Samaria and the uttermost parts of the earth. In other words, he, he sent them on out to cast out demonic spirits. Now, when this, now when the demonic spirits was cast out of those men by them having the Holy Spirit, then what happened? They were sealed with the Holy Spirit. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and they were sealed and with the promise. How long till the day of redemption? Now, John says this, and this is also in the law. There is a sin that is not unto death. I do not say that you should pray for it. Now that's blasphemy. And now the person with the Holy Spirit in them, I want you to see and understand what I'm talking about. Person with the Holy Spirit in them, just like Peter down at Cornelius' house. And we're taught that water baptism and carnal ordinances and all those things were 
was passed away, right? Right. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> Thank you. Peter commanded them to be baptized in water, which was done under the dispensation of the law. That is John baptizing under the dispensation of the law. That was wrong. No water baptism in this age. Carnal ordinances all been fulfilled and moved out of the way. But now when the Holy Spirit has come, he teaches. He teaches you all things. Not these people that have indulged and participated in that. They didn't know no better. And you never will find out no better out there in the Roman Catholic Church and in the Protestant churches, just like it was a grievous, very grievous thing for that person to sit here this morning after Dr. Harris has preached as hard as he had preached. And then they turned around and said they had to go to their church tonight, the Baptist church, to take communion. And even now, the book says, you can't eat it. And Yahshua told them that was the last supper. Now, these people just don't understand things. Now, I want to go on the seventh chapter uh, of Romans and show you that Paul was speaking to the people that knew the law. Everybody didn't know the law. That's the reason why we refer you to go back to the law. And at the time, he's saying what he is saying here in the seventh chapter of Romans. He's trying to tell you that he then was talking to them under the law and how he was when he was under the law. Now, how is it done after he's received the Holy Spirit? That's where you're making your mistake. Read the last few verses of that there. Find the phrase there, I speak to them that know the law. First verse, know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law. Now, don't you see, if you didn't go back there and look at the law, and if you don't know nothing about it, then you don't know what he's talking about. I speak, well, what about it? Read on. Read on. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. That's right. But if the husband be dead. But if the husband be dead. She is loosed from the law of her husband. She is loose from the law of her husband. Read. So then. So then. If while her husband liveth. So then if while her husband liveth. She be married to another man. She shall be caught. Uh, she be married to another man. She shall be called an adulteress. Under the dispensation of the law. That's what the law said. Now you want some verification of that? Matthew, don't leave the place there. Hold the book on in case I got to come back there, people. We, we want to get some understanding about that. Matthew's 12 and 40. I want to show you what the situation was when he was on the earth walking around. The problem was just about the same then as it is now. And I want you to realize that. Same thing, worse now, read. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the fish's belly. No, the verse or two above it, Dr. Harris. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees. Then certain of the scribes and Pharisees. Answered. Answered. Saying. Saying. Rabbi. Rabbi. We would see a sign from thee. Show us a sign. We see a sign from thee. Read. But he answered and said unto them. And he answered and said unto them. 
an evil, an adulterous nation. Now, I want you to get that thing straight. Now, you get that thing straight and straight now. Because you got the same situation prevailing right now. Ye that are a wicked and an adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Now, the reason why I brought that up is on this account. Now, there's been some signs given this year back in Ohio and also down in Birmingham, Alabama and around. There's been some signs given. Then somebody comes along and say, look, if you had a vision, we want to see a sign. Tell me to heal somebody. Then go pick out somebody for me to heal. Show them a sign. Now, them people are wicked. They are adulterous. It's always been people that have a condemned conscience. They want somebody to show them a sign, and then once the sign is shown, they don't want to see it. Now, for example, we told you that Tuesday just passed was the beginning of the Feast of Tabernacles. And I told you there would always be a reflection of it. Now, what was the reflection? I asked you then about, about the Day of Atonement and earthquake. And I taught you and I tried my best to teach you those things so that you would be mindful of them. And watch right along with sign and the situation and the condition. Now that's prevailing. They are signs. Can't you read the sign of near the end? Not the end of the age, because that's already done happen. But the probationary period, you've been 14 years in that. And I've tried even to go so far to tell you that the Roman Catholics, Jehovah Witnesses, and the Church of God, and just multiply millions of people upon the face of the earth, they think that 1975 will be the end of that Jesus is going to drop down through the sky in 1975. They think that. Now here's some of the signs. Earthquakes and diverse places. I told you, I stood in this pulpit and told you. They say that when earthquakes, they have the seismologists, they have an instrument. Seismologist. Seismologists, thank you. They have an instrument setting up there in the mountain. And when the earthquakes or tremors, it registers on the Richter scale. And they say that they don't know how to tell when one is going to happen. But now I stood here and told you when it's going to happen and the day and hour when it's supposed to happen. I stood in this forefront and I told you that and told you not to come back here no more if it didn't happen like I said it. Am I lying? No. no. Answer me. No, no sir. sir. No, sir. Yes, I told you about many things down, right straight on down, and tried to show you that when we teach down at this school is right, what we teach down in this school is right. Then somebody goes with something, some junk that somebody else said. And it come bringing it to me and show me where I was making a mistake. Everyone says, I'm wrong. I mean, the so-called Christian world out here. So ain't no need in going seeking out something. Everybody says, I'm wrong. Roman Catholics and Protestants and other religious, all of them say I'm wrong. There ain't nothing new about that either. They said Yahshua the Messiah was wrong, said he was possessed of a demonic spirit or the devil. They said that. So what do you expect them to say of me? Woe unto the men who the world speaks well of. For they sure haven't spoken any too well of me. And on top of that, on top of all that, I had my pants kicked. I've been beat up. 
Very few people have been beat up for preaching the gospel. Someone can start there. A wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, but there shall no sign, but there shall be no sign given except the sign which was given unto the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the fish, even shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Now they didn't, they didn't understand that. Ambassador College will say up there, we have the book at home. They say he was crucified on a Wednesday. Now what they're doing, they're trying to get three days and three nights in, as you know time to be, or as you reckon time to be. Three days and three nights. Now that's not so. And he wasn't crucified on no Wednesday, but they had to do that in order to say Wednesday's one, Thursdays two, Friday three, Saturday, which they say is the Sabbath, he rose from the dead. Now listen, Sabbath afternoon. We got the book at home, don't we, Dr. Gross? They say he rose from the dead Sabbath afternoon, crucified on Wednesday. That's wrong. Well, what's wrong with it? Talking about your sign now. Did you ever see? I want to know this. Now, this is what I want to know, because it's just like all the rest of them things. Now, take clear on back to Adam. He was driven out of the garden. Now, I want you to understand this. Maybe you'd better get the third chapter of Luke, the last verse, so that you can see that he's a son, too. Now, now, now hurry up, because I don't, I don't, I don't. Which was the son of Enosh. Which was the son of Enoch. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Seth. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of Adam. Which was the son of Elohim. Now, do you understand that? Adam was a son of Elohim or a son of God. I'm trying to put it so that everybody can see what I'm talking about. The book said so. And when he sinned, Yahweh waited until the cool of the day. Now, here's what I'm talking about. You take the ethereal sun in the ethereal heavens out there in respect to the universe. The sun, as you know, the S-U-N out there and the S-O-N, Adam. Yahweh waited until the cool of the day to drive that man out. In other words, they were both coming down together. Adam is coming on down to death. In fact, he died right there in his conscience, in, right in the garden, instantaneously too, within a twinkling of an eye. No wonder Yahweh said in the 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Because that's what, that's how it happened. That's how, that's how quick he died that day. No sooner than he put his hand on the fruit there, right there is where he died at. Now look, they're coming down together, them two sons. Yahweh fixed this thing up so you just don't have no excuse. But the real facts in the case are these. Your minister out there doesn't understand it. And we tell you things down here that you never heard in your life. And listen, you ain't going to just park here no second or so and get up and walk out the door down there and go get a drink of water or something and go out downstairs and smoke a cigarette or something or other and think you got it made. You can't do. You can't do that. You can sit here. And Dr. Gross sat here for 15 years, and this is the president I'm talking about, and misunderstood some things. Is that right, Doc? Yes. What you're dealing with is a great big mystery. Now, these two sons, that's why Yahweh waited until the cool of the day. In other words, 
the sun in the ethereal heaven is coming down, and Adam is being driven out of the garden in the cool of the day. Now look, when Yahshua the Messiah is crucified out here on the cross, the sun went on down at noonday. In other words, the blood was running out of his body when he was dying, and the sun, it went and dropped on down at noonday. Now this day, listen now, this day was known only to Yahweh. Suppose you read that, Dr. Harris. Suppose you read it there, Dr. Allen, that the sun did go down at noonday. I think you'll find it in Malachi 4, verse 2 or somewhere. And it shall come to pass. Now here's Zechariah. Zechariah, I'm sorry. Zechariah 14 and 6. Now here's Zechariah 14 and 6. And it shall come to pass in that day. In that day. That's the light shall that the light shall not be clear in some places. That the light shall. That's the reason why we put this up here on top of this chart right there. It shall come to pass that the light shall not be clear. Now, if you notice up here at the top, you can't see it too well here. It's light. This was the day coming in. And at 12 noon, it turned black, dark, till three o'clock in the afternoon. Then it was light again. Now it went on back into darkness again and around to the next morning. Now that day was known only to Yahweh. That's the reason why I tell you, don't anybody know nothing about the purpose of Yahweh but Yahweh himself. Please get that straight. That day was known only to him. Now look what you got here. You got in the first chapter of Genesis, you got Moses' vision, where Yahweh said that the face of the earth, that the darkness was upon the face of the deep. And Yahweh said, let there be light. That's cosmic light. Don't have no sun till the fourth day. Yahshua the Messiah was born in the 4,000th year or on the fourth day. One day with Yahweh is a thousand years, and a thousand years is as one day. And that's the day. That's the time that's confused the man. Adam lived 930 years and died 70 years short of one day with Yahweh. And look, folks, people have, men have went in this Bible and tried to figure it all out. Went around and posed as preachers and robbed people for years of their money and of their souls. And I'm talking about Roman Catholics and Protestants and the Buddhist and whatnot, demons. Get it straight. Again, I'll repeat, don't nobody know nothing about Yahweh, the purpose of Yahweh himself. Now look, whoever is in this building that ever seen the sunrise, I mean the sun in the sky, Whoever seen it rise in the afternoon of any day, please stand up. You see that now? Now, Ambassador College say that Yahshua the Messiah rose from the dead in the Sabbath afternoon. Now, if that was true, and the Sabbath means rest, he broke the rest. I haven't forgot the subject. I'm going back. Yes, sir, I'm going back to them that know the law and the prophets. And that's what Paul is talking about. And how these demonic spirits incarnated in physical bodies has run all around here and lied to you and told you every kind of tale. There is hardly any kind of a tale that you can think of that they haven't lied to you about. Done lied to you about water baptism lied to you about Lord's suppers, and lied to you about circumcision. What? Just lied and lied and lied. That's all they've been doing. Ain't telling nothing but lies. Them are demonic spirits incarnated in physical bodies. Is that clear to you, Roger Jackson? They don't know nothing about what it's all about. Now that day was known only to Yahweh then wouldn't it take Yahweh to explain it? Is that what the book says? 
But it shall be one day which shall be known to Yahweh. Now that's right. It shall be one day known only to Yahweh. And Ambassador College and none of the rest of them can figure it out. You've scored some this afternoon, folks. There'll be one day that's known to Yahweh only. That's the reason why I plead with you people and I beg you. Now it, there just ain't no need to end. Well, I'm going down there this morning and see what they have got to say. And then I'm going over to my church tonight. You don't have no church. If I understood Yahshua the Messiah right, he said, upon this rock, meaning himself, I will build my church, not yours. Now, whoever heard tell of Yahshua the Messiah leaving heaven to come down and to build a Roman Catholic church or a Baptist church or a Methodist church, that, that, that really don't make sense. All right, read, Freddie. Okay, can I stop for a moment? Because <clears throat> yes. we read a lot, and I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood the three days and three nights he just explained. So it was just perfect to me. But is, does anybody have any questions about that? Okay, I just wanted to be sure, because I know we got new people on, on the line. Can you just go ahead on and... and um... Speak on it again, Jackie. Thank you. <laughs> well, he was showing forth how uh, he went over in Genesis to show first what a day and a night was. And then he showed forth how when Yahshua was on the cross, you know, they placed him on the cross at nine o'clock in the morning. And then at 12 o'clock, the sun went down from 12 until three. So you had a day and then you had night because it was light and then it was dark. And then he says, after the, after three o'clock, it returned light again and the day was completed. So you had two days and two nights in that one day Friday. And then Saturday, you know, he was in the tomb. He fulfilled the Sabbath. He was the only one. That me, I'm, I'm not trying to, to interrupt you, but I got some scriptures for you. So you want... Um, Genesis 1 and 14. Go ahead, just showing where he called the light day and the darkness he called night. That was just showing what we consider light. He con Yahweh considered day. And what he considered night, He uh, a dark, he considered night. You want to read? What we show forth in the, when he was crucified on the cross at nine o'clock in the morning, how the sun went down at three, at 12 noon. And it was dark from 12 noon to three o'clock, which showed darkness. So we had light and darkness. That's picking up a day. And then when they took him off the cross at three, it turned light again. So it completed that day until the next morning. So you had another day and a night. So you had two days and two nights in that one day. And that day was a phenomenal day. Yes, it was phenomenal day. And that's why the world don't know because they don't understand. And that's why the wisdom of Yahweh versus the wisdom of man is just no hope for them. That's what Dr. Kenley was saying. He said, they just don't know. And they mm -hmm. can't know because they haven't had a divine vision and revelation. But they can know if they come in here because Yahweh has given every man on the planet the opportunity to know this great teaching. That's why mm -hmm. we're so internally blessed to be able to sit in one of these classes, to sit down and hear the words of our creator. So you Spoken. want Amos 8 and 9? If yes, that's what please. you want to get. Mm -hmm. So on the screen. And it shall come to pass, if that day saith Yah Yahweh, that I will cause the sun to go down at noon. And... I will darken the earth in the clear day. And mm. I will turn your feast into mourning and all your songs into lamentation. And I will bring up sackcloth upon all lions and loins. baldness lo loins and baldness upon every head. 
and I will make it as the mourning of an only son, only son, and the end thereof as a bitter day. Behold, the days come. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's but this is the point right here. Okay, cause the sun to go down at noon, and then I got one more scripture for you, Psalms one hundred four and nineteen. Okay, where is Psalms on four nineteen. Uh, After that, can I say something, hi everyone? Oh yeah, please right. do. He appointed the moon for seasons. The sun north is going down. Hold on, Dr. Mixon. Mm -hmm. Somebody wanted to say something. Yeah, Dr. Mm -hmm. from Jamaica, Dr. Rod. Oh, Junior. Mark. Oh, no, Junior. Oh, that's, that's Junior. Okay, yeah. You got something to say? Yeah. Um, Some people might know I'm from the Spanish tone class, but I've been really struggling with this particular principle ever since. Um, the, the part that I struggling with is, is how to get like the first day, then the second day, then the third day, right? Mm -hmm. So like you, like I will, I wanted to explain to me, like you know, say he's on the cross from from nine o'clock, and the sun goes on twelve. So I want to know from nine to twelve is that's the first day. You understand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Shed some light on that for me, it's please. Still the, the, the... The point is that there's two days and there's two nights in one day. That's the that's the uh, that's that's the secret. You want to explain that, Doctor McCain? From nine a.m. to twelve noon is a day because it was light. You see oh, so that's the, the first day. You see it on the screen? No, I'm not seeing it. Um, that's the first day from nine yeah. to three, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, continue. Yeah. So that's the first day. And from 12 to 3, it turned dark. Uh -huh. And, you know, and, Do and Yahweh told us in Genesis where it's dark, it's, it's night, right? Right. Yeah. Okay, so that's the that's the day and the night. So that's a day. Mm -hmm. So that's the first day and the first night. Right. Exactly. Good. Continue. Okay. And at 3 p.m., it turned light again. At 3 a.m., at 3, it turned light again. In the 3 afternoon, 3 p.m. So and that's the second day. That's the second day. And then, you oh, know, it's you. Night until the next day, you know, you go into a night. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. So that's the second day. So right within Friday is, is two days, two night. Yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Good. Understanding the word. Hallelujah. Yeah. Continue. Praise Joshua. Thank you. <laughs> Good question. Praise Shashan. We have two minutes. And then Sunday. It's the Sabbath. Well, no, not Sunday. It's the Sabbath. Saturday. Sunday. On Saturday, there was a regular light and dark. But he was uh, in. Yeah. Good. I, I think I grasped it now. Hallelujah. No, yes. I got it. No, I got it. No, I can explain the three days and the three nights. Yay! Hallelujah! Thank you very hallelujah. much. Hallelujah! Yes, Hallelujah! It took me a while to get that one too, Doc. Me too. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you, Doctor McCain. Praise Joshua. Okay, so we stopped off on page. we this is the second reading of this. <laughs> We're on page nine, so. Uh, we uh, if I don't know how to get in touch with Martha, so Lenore, if you know how to get in touch with Martha yeah, to okay. do thing, you know, just con you know, see if you can contact her. Okay. And uh, that we're going to finish these aims, and hopefully, I want to get into the last two lectures of Dr. Kinley that he did in December. Uh, it's two lectures in December he did. I want to. After these lectures, that's what I would like to get into so we can truly see what he was saying at the end of his time on this earth. And the Jackie, message. Yes, ma'am. You mean December 3rd and December 21st? Yes, ma'am. Those two lectures. Yes, let me see. I got it right here. 
that uh, three day and three nights is in volume four, page 49. Excuse me? That three days and three nights is in volume four, page 49. The textbook. In the yes. textbook, yes. Dr. Dennis Pratt just posted it, uh, Dr. McCain. Yes. Thank you. It's December the 3rd, 1975, and December the 21st, 1975. Okay, Those good. Two Thank you. So we got to finish uh, One Spirit in the Body, and everybody is understanding by how it's just one spirit, how Yahweh is spirit. And uh, he has two manifestations as Elohim, if you can show the Moses chart, as Elohim and Yahshua. And he also has two mysteries. He's the, uh, uh, you show the Ayah as your Ayah chart, you see that he's the, uh, he's got the vision of he created darkness and how he is the light. So uh, we serve a great creator and it is only one spirit you know and he allowed us to know it okay kamala um dr mccain you just uh let me get some clarification when you said those two mysteries uh -huh. you, could you repeat that again i say yahweh is spirit right it's only one spirit well no that part i understood but i thought you said uh the two manifestation was was uh elohim well you got and right yahshua <laughs> No, 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 no. If I, I misspoke then if I said that. Oh, okay. All right. Okay, let me say it again. Let me say it again right quick because I know time is up. I say Yahweh is spirit. You no, know, he's just that one spirit. And uh, in that one spirit, he showed us that he has two manifestations of, uh, of uh, righteousness in Elohim and Yahshua as the Holy Spirit. And then that one spirit also is two mysteries the mystery of righteousness and the mystery of unrighteousness. So see, it's still just one spirit and he's showing us how he really is and actually exists. When you go up in Isaiah, how he create uh, evil, you know, he make uh, peace, but create evil. So we know that everything is made and operate according to Yahweh and his purpose. If I said that correctly, I'm not really good with words. But anyway, it's two minutes after, and I apologize for going over. Uh, I turn it over to the moderator if uh, everybody's understanding what I just said. <laughs> I'm sorry. We'd like to thank everyone that came out to study with us today. We hold classes Tuesday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 8 o'clock a.m. to 10 o'clock p.m., I mean, a.m., I'm sorry, Pacific Standard Time, 12 o'clock p.m. to 2 o'clock a.m. I guess that should be 12 a.m. Twelve a.m. to 2 a.m. in Malaysia and 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. in England. The Jamaica class is on Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. May we all please stand in our hearts and minds for the doxology taken from the last two verses of the book of Jude, Holy Name Bible. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless in the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory and majesty, dominion and power, both before all time and now and ever. Let the class say, hallelujah. 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 Yeah, bless your name. You do the same, brother. Um, Mama, did that answer your question? Oh, no, because you had you guys had said that there was someone new there, and I just really wanted to clarify for them. That's great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you look at Isaiah 45 and 7, it says, I form the light and create darkness. I make yeah. people, I make peace and create punishment. I, right. Yahweh, do all these things. And right. if you remember back in the book of Job, um, he says to, to the devil or and he says, have you considered my servant Job? 
He's mm-hmm. not just having an empty conversation. It's an assignment. So he, he controls this. And it, there's a scripture that says, is there trouble in the city and Yahweh hasn't caused it? All these things <laughs> cause you. The, the devil was coming after the children of Israel in Egypt. And they were at the divided waters of the Red Sea. And they were in a tizzy. And because that devil was coming after them, it caused them to listen to Yahweh and go right through this wall that I'm making in this water over here. You you see the iniquity? I'm hoping that all this stuff with this P. Diddy makes young people say, you know, I don't want no part of that stuff. That man is crazy. He's ridiculous. And if that's what I have to do to have fame, no, thank you. You look at the iniquity and it should push you to righteousness. Mm-hmm. And the only way that you're going to see is you gotta, you're going to have dark print on a white page. You need to see the contrast. Now, some people think they need to be the contrast. No, you don't have to be the contrast in order for me to see the contrast. The, co- the contrast is enough. You don't have to be a knucklehead. So say, oh, now I know about, no. You walk in righteousness and you let you be a, a light to the world. And that's what Israel was supposed to be, a light to the world to make the Gentiles say, and, you know, I'm giving up Thor and this one and that one. I'm going to follow Yahweh. And that's what happened to Cornelius. He saw Israel. He said, you know what? I want a piece of that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yes. Absolutely. Of course. Perfect sense. I want to be on the AT. <laughs> <laughs> that's a great question.